Another mechanical defect has struck cleanup efforts at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Engineers have again had to abandon a sophisticated water filtration device. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers have been using a machine known as the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, to remove radioactive substances from water, but the system has been plagued with trouble. TEPCO managers now say a crane that was moving containers of toxic water to the system has failed. TEPCO says it does not know when the operations can resume. We have stopped all functions of ALPS. We have not identified the cause of the problem. We will carry out repairs on the crane and restart the system. There are about 1,000 tanks full of contaminated water at the plant, and additional 400 tons is accumulating every day. TEPCO executives earlier announced their goal of decontaminating all water stored in the tanks by March 2015. Officials at a nuclear power plant in western Japan have come up with extra measures aimed at protecting the facility in the event of a severe accident. The move comes as Japan's nuclear authority has been conducting a safety review at the Ikata plant. Officials at Shikoku Electric Power Company want to restart one of the plant's reactors. The Nuclear Regulation Authority found that measures at the plant against tornadoes and fires were inadequate. In response, workers have covered a tank for heavy oil with 20 centimeter thick cushioning material made of aluminum and stainless steel. The tank will now be resistant to the impact of an object traveling 360 kilometers an hour blown by the wind. The oil would be used to power an emergency generator. Workers also cut down all trees within 35 meters of the oil tank to prevent fire from spreading. They are now installing two layers of filters on a building that would serve as a command center in case of a severe accident. The filters would protect the building from radioactive materials. Government officials the say they'll maintain the nuclear fuel recycling policy as part of Japan's basic energy plan, but they're still grappling with several challenges. Nuclear power plants across Japan remain offline for now. If they resume operation, some could run out of space to store spent fuel in just a few years. Managers at power companies want to reprocess and recycle the stockpiles, but engineers aren't ready to use the plutonium that would be extracted from it. Government officials have plans to use it in a prototype fast breeder reactor in western Japan. The Monju facility has experienced a succession of problems and it's unknown if it will ever be put into use. 
The officials are also struggling to find a disposal site for the highly radioactive nuclear waste created by the recycling process. They want to bury it deep underground, but they're yet to find a candidate location. Japan's Transport Ministry is planning to make improvements to Tokyo's transit systems connecting Haneda Airport with the city center. The move comes as Tokyo prepares for the 2020 Olympic Games. The first step will be the launch of a late-night airport bus leaving Haneda after 1 a.m. The experimental project will start in October. Currently, some international flights arrive at Haneda after midnight, but buses and trains make their final runs before the late arrivals. Ministry officials are also exploring ways to accommodate additional international flights into and out of Haneda after midnight. They consider it crucial to make improvements to transit systems connecting the airport to Tokyo's center. The ministry is also considering building a railway line connecting Narita and Haneda airports. Narita is located further away from the, the city market center. in Tokyo is a major attraction for tourists and professional chefs. People come from all over to watch the tuna auctions and to buy seafood. But the market is getting ready for some major changes. The current area consists of an inner wholesale market for professionals and an outer market that anyone can visit. The inner market will be relocated in 2016 to the waterfront district of Toyosu. Officials are planning a new facility for the outer area. It will have shops that sell fresh seafood and produce. Visitors will be able to relax in an open-air plaza. Officials plan to begin soliciting tenants later this month and will decide on the new occupants by the middle of the year. The new facility is due to open before the inner market closes. Iran's chief nuclear negotiator says he and delegates from six world powers are aiming to reach a final agreement on his country's nuclear program. And he says he hopes it will open the door for Japanese companies to build nuclear power plants on Iranian soil. Deputy Foreign Minister Abbas Arogchi says he thinks a nuclear tie-up will become a key topic of discussion between Japan and Iran. Japan has a very advanced technology on uh, nuclear power plants. I see good prospects in the future that Iran and Japan can cooperate uh, in the field of uh, power plants in Iran. Arogchi said Japan's leaders are aware of the idea. Iranian authorities say they want to generate 20,000 megawatts of electricity from nuclear Turkish power. Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan is in Japan meeting with his counterpart Shinzo Abe. The two countries already have a strong relationship and Erdogan's visit could take it to a new level. NHK World's Noriko Okada tells us more. Erdogan and Abe agreed that the two governments will start talks for an Economic Partnership Agreement or EPA by abolishing tariffs and simplifying customs procedures. They hope to boost the economies of both countries. This week's Japan-Turkey summit is the third in eight months. Abe visited Turkey twice last year. When Abe visited Turkey in May, he and Erdogan signed a deal that will see Japanese companies export nuclear-related technology to Turkey. And in October, they signed an agreement that will see Japanese and French firms jointly build Turkey's second nuclear power plant. The deal is worth an estimated $22 billion. The main reason Abe visited the country in October 
was to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the founding of the Turkish Republic. Anniversary celebrations that Abe attended included the opening of a subway tunnel connecting the Asian and European sides of Istanbul, Turkey's biggest city. I like everything the Japanese make. I'm sure this subway, built with Japanese support, will be wonderful. About 100 Turkish business people are joining Erdogan on his visit to Japan. They met Japanese business leaders to lay the groundwork for future cooperation and investment. Hello. Erdogan said in an interview with NHK that he hopes for increased cooperation between Turkey and Japan, especially in the fields of infrastructure, energy and technology. Japan and Turkey can cooperate in energy sectors such as natural gas, renewable energy, and hydroelectric power generation. We can also tackle air pollution, which poses a challenge for Turkey. We hope that Japan will start building a new nuclear power plant in Turkey and complete it in the near future. The two countries have also been looking for ways to work together in the defense field. They are examining the possibility of jointly developing engines for tanks. In the defense industry field, we are ready to invest in possible areas of cooperation with Japan. The talks are continuing. We would like to cooperate more in this area with Japan. Turkey is a growing economy with a population of over 70 million. It can be a gateway for Japan to both the Middle East and Europe. Japan's attraction for Turkey is that it's a longtime friend and a democratic country in a growing Asian region. Turkey places a high value on Japanese technology and innovation. We know how industrious the Japanese people are, but we Turks are also hardworking. If we combine our strengths and work together, we can both achieve a lot. I really believe so. Abe and Erdogan also agreed to work together to try to achieve peace in Syria when representatives of world powers meet later this month in Geneva. That Kawasaki Heavy Industry are helping to meet the growing transport needs of the U.S. capital. They're supplying a new series of rail car for the subway lines of Washington. The executive showed off the model at a suburban station. It will be the first Japanese rail car to run on the D.C. metro. Washington's trans transit officials will use the Kawasaki fleet to replace old stock and deploy on new lines. We are projecting that over the next 20 years we'll add 250,000 people and I am delighted to be here today to accept these new cars coming into our region. Kawasaki's cars use stainless steel for stronger bodies. They also have more space near the doors for wheelchairs. The firm will deliver 528 cars to the U.S. Capitol over the next four years. Demand for new rail cars is growing in other U.S. cities. We'll aim to satisfy the need for replacements in those places as well.